Estamos hoy en la Facultad Complutense de Madrid, en la, en la, facultad de, en la Universidad Complutense de Madrid, en la Facultad de Filosofía, con el doctor Obridi Gray. Eh, Obridi Gray es el fundador de la, de la Fundación SENS y autor de El fin del envejecimiento, que es un libro que Lola Books va a publicar en breve, en seguramente febrero o marzo de 2013. Thank you very much for being with us in Madrid. Um, we are uh, very interested in the point of view of your book concerning aging. Um, the first thing I think that uh, could um, ask you is, where do you think that we will be in 20 years? I think that within 20 years we will probably still not quite have really decisive technology that brings human aging under medical control. But I think that it's very likely that we will be close enough to that point that everybody knows it's coming soon. In particular, I think that perhaps even as soon as 10 years from now, we will have results in the laboratory in mice that are very, very impressive and compelling evidence that it can be done. And uh, in order to achieve these uh, goals, you have uh, developed a very interesting and very new uh, perspective uh, about aging. And uh, that is uh, that you have identified the causes of aging and uh, uh, not so much focus on metabolism. Could you please uh, explain a little bit more uh, what your strategy is? Sure. The real thing I did actually was not so much to identify causes of aging, but to see a new way of classifying them and organizing them, so organizing existing information, so as to clarify a good way to bring aging under medical control. In particular, I realized that even though our metabolism, the way the body works, is really complicated and still very poorly understood, we do know most of what we need to know about what that complicated process does in terms of laying down damage, laying down side effects in the body that gradually change the molecular and cellular composition and structure of the body. And we also have a good idea about how those accumulating changes eventually cause diseases and disabilities of old age. So, if we can find ways to repair the various types of molecular and cellular damage that accumulate throughout life, then we can stop the diseases of old age from emerging, even though we don't really understand the details of how the damage is created. And uh, um, in vision, uh, 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 a moment where these technologies are available and uh, uh, we have been able to treat um, uh, aging medically. How do you envision humanity once this level is reached? Do, do you envision um, people uh, living healthy and, um, and in good condition for hundreds of years? It's very hard to talk about the situation that will exist when these technologies are in place, simply because this is a long way in the future. Even 20 years from now, you know, there are so much, much that will have changed in other ways in society and for humanity that it's very hard to speculate. And certainly 30 or 40 years from now, when these technologies are likely to exist and to be widely available, you know, it's so far in the future that everything could have changed. So really, I like to focus mostly on the things that we do know. One thing is that once we can completely control aging with medicine, we will not have the diseases of old age. So we will not have Alzheimer's, we will not have cardiovascular disease, we will not have type 2 diabetes, we will not have most cancers. This is a big deal. And of course it will have enormous consequences for how people run their lives, what choices people make in how they prioritize things. It may also make a big difference to how long people live. But it's important to remember that that is a side effect of staying healthy for a long time. Okay, and um, that means, for example, that um, uh, do, do, you, do you think that we will make progress in uh, an exponential way or do you think that we will be more gradual uh, change in, in, in this direction? 
Almost all technologies accelerate in how they progress after they have initially been put in place. It's very hard to predict when a fundamental breakthrough was going to be made, but after it's been made, it seems that the incremental small refinements of that breakthrough that add up and make it better tend to happen quite smoothly, and yes, they tend to accelerate. But the really good news for us about in, in terms of aging is that actually we will not need the technology to accelerate. Even if there is no acceleration and we continue to improve these medicines only at a linear rate, then we will still be able to keep one step ahead of the aging problem, so to speak. Well, thank you very much for your insights. It's extremely interesting. And uh, y como lo dicho, en febrero o marzo de 2013 podrán ustedes encontrar el libro del doctor Di Grey, El fin del envejecimiento, que publicará Lola Books eh, en breve. Thank you very much. Thank you.